on this episode of Action Film Face Off. Before I wish for your annihilation, any last words? This may not fit here, but when him and, and the Ben Foster character finally got the quote unquote revenge and killed the guy who was behind everything, both those guys entered both emptied both of their magazines. Five minutes later. Blam, 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 blam. Okay. <laughs> The Long Box Crusade presents Action Film Face Off. This episode, it's 1988 versus 2011. Two films enter. One film leaves. Two men enter. One man 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 But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hit. Welcome back to Action Film Face Off, everybody. This is the show where two random years are selected. My brother will bring an action film from one random year. I bring one from another random year. Those two films do battle using a variety of criteria. And the champion is crowned by the end of the episode. I am Jared Albrick. Some people call me the Dark Web. My co-host is my brother Jason. Some people call him DJ Cristados. <laughs> Some people call me the gangster of love. <laughs> We're mixing it up today. We're being silly and having fun. Probably because our guest sniper this time is a little bit silly and thinks these jokes are funny-ish. Anyway, Jason and I are both military combat vets and we're going to be joined by another military vet today on this episode and we're all going to take this very seriously right no not really we're gonna have fun so what kind of an episode do we have in front of us today uh it's not really a themed episode this is more of a regular episode for me this was a half blind fire i'd seen action jackson never seen the mechanic what about you jason i'd seen the mechanic i'd never seen action jackson i know I oh, know. okay. Okay. I'm ashamed of myself as I say it. <laughs> yeah, it's so we kind of came at this from two angles. Well, that's cool. All right. Well, Jason's going to explain stuff to us now. Yes, indeed. We're going to score each of today's films on a scale of one through ten in five categories. Those categories are the story, the overall spectacle, the best action scene, the hero, and the villain. And it's still not in that order. Because they don't pay me enough here to do real quality editing. So just take what we give you and like it. However, one thing I do guarantee, at the end, we'll have a deduction round. Where up to 10 points can be deducted or minus for whatever we think is the low point of the film. I think that's it. I believe you're correct, Jason. And it's time to introduce our sniper. We are... Joined by a sniper who has just one point to give in each category, so the sniper can sway the scoring by a total of five points. Let's meet our sniper, a return sniper, which is rare. It is Delvin Williams, a.k.a. Death Probe. Welcome to the show, Delvin. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. You're a return sniper. I am. I am a return sniper. I think I was the first sniper, right? I, th was, I was thinking I the same thing. I was like, was Delvin the very first sniper? I think he was. Yeah, Kathy may have, have, have been on more, but I was the first. I was the first. And you've been a you've sat in as a co-host once too when we did host swap I, with Transformers. Yep, uh, maybe even twice because I did uh, taking a Pelham one two three mm -hmm. and um, Passenger fifty seven. Also, oh, they squared off against each other. Yeah, I'm saying I was there for that one. Right, right. I think you were the um, you were the sniper for that. I'm pretty sure. Was I a sniper? You were the yeah, co-host. You, you hosted War. one of the Mission Impossible movies. Right, I remember. War I was Mission pissed. Impossible. I was like, man, I wanted to get that movie. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, welcome back. Thank you. Good to be back. Delvin is actually sitting in. We had booked Crusaders Club member and friend of the show and host for the Waiting for Doom podcast, Paul Hicks from Down Under in Australia. But unfortunately, a schedule conflict came up. And I think I told him we're going to do it in the winter time, and it turns out their winter is different from our. Anyways, uh, Delvin's pinch hitting for politics. Oh, geography jokes for everybody out there. 
Oh, but I have to ask Delvin his pop-up question. And he's been on the show before, so he's had the pop-up question on what his three favorite action films are, I'm pretty sure. So I'm going to give him a little curveball. And I'm going to say, Delvin, I would like to know what your favorite Carl Weathers film is and what your favorite Jason Statham film is. Oh, man. It's not an action movie, but what's the movie that Jason Statham is in with Old Girl? That's hilarious. The Spy? Oh, he was was in that with Melissa McCarthy, right? Yes. I forgot he he was. was. He was basically (laughs) playing a parody. Parody's nuts. Thank you. He's playing a parody of himself, but he was absolutely over the top and hilarious. The one thing that you can always appreciate with Jason Statham is that he is at least in on the bit, too. He knows that he is doing similar type movies, but he's being paid a <laughs> ton of money to, to do it. And I don't blame him one bit. And so to do a movie like Spy, he was in on it. So I, I give him a lot of credit for that. Carl Weathers, again, I got to go humor. You know, I'm going with Happy Gilmore. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I do. I mean, if, and if anything, Jared Carl Albrecht can't dis- dispute that opinion because I had to watch that in his tra- <laughs> in the trailer back at Auburn so many times. That at the, but at the time, I really didn't know who Carl Weathers was. And another good one would be Rocky, obviously, yeah, that's right, that's right. Or, you know, of Apollo Creed. Uh, but like, I didn't necessarily relate him to that, even as I was watching Happy Gilmore. So I have to go with Happy and him being Chubbs, man. Like, I mean, that's, <laughs> I know those are comedy and not action films, but you know, that's it's what we're all right. It is something charming about these like tough guy actors who are willing to laugh at themselves and that it's, there's a charm to it. So I get it. Well. Before our two films under the Video Dome Arena, we are thrilled to kick off this episode with special shout-outs to our Crusaders Club members. These are the fine folks who have joined our crusade. They enjoy early access to special long box episodes and so much more. These are the folks reaping the benefits and giving some much appreciated support to the show. And Helica Wolf. Oh. Oh. Auburn Elvis. Bill Beer, Blasted or Stash It, Braxton Underwood, Clinton Robeson, Captain Entropy, Clark Westfield, Dave Collins, you probably know him as the Battle Wagon, Battle Wagon, Ezra Gallo, you probably know him as Ezra Gallo, Gary V, Gene Hendricks, Gerald Green, Heinz K, Jason Keen, Jason Lady, you shouldn't read yourself, Jason, it's kind of self-indulgent, Jeremy L., Jim Jarman, Jim Jarman, Jim Jarman, Jim Jarman. I hope you like Jim Jarman too. Jim Meal. Joe Thomas. John Watson. Josh Strickland. Candace Ward. Captivating Kathy Bright, our MVP. Matt and Lissy Hasso. Mark Ross. Maxwell Traver. Miranda W. P.D. Devins. Paul Hicks. We miss you, Paul. Rick from Jeff and Rick present. Rob Morgan. Samantha Maney. Sean Urbanski. Spidey, 67. Spreadsheet. Steve Cronin. Tim Price. Tony Pennington. And Toronto Cop. If we missed anyone on the list, we apologize. Please keep in mind we record these episodes well in advance of release. If you're a recent edition, we'll add you soon. But no worries if we missed you. You can send an email to contact at longboxcrusade.com and we'll get it squared away. If you're asking yourself, how do I get in on this? How do I become a Crusaders Club member? It's very simple. Patreon.com slash longboxcrusade. For as little as $1 a month, you get all the access to the amazing world of the Crusaders Club. We'd love to have you. Come and check it out. Out. Enough of this, Jack, son. Let's get on with the action. Let's get back to the combat and learn a bit about the film Gladiators about to battle for your pleasure. This episode, I was assigned the year of 1988, and I couldn't be happier. It's an embarrassment of riches, 1988 is. And I selected Action Jackson. What year did the randomizer select for you, Jason? Well, I got 2011, and there are some pretty good selections in there, too. But for this episode, I chose The Mechanic. Okay, fine matchup for this one, folks. It's important to point out this isn't Jared versus Jason. We each had to select from our assigned year, so 
I might very well like his selection better than mine or vice versa. This is really more about us discussing these beloved action films and coming to a consensus on which one is this episode's champion. Quick around the room on where we saw it. Now, Action Jackson is a movie I picked up on DVD about a year ago. I hadn't seen it either. DVD is nuts. Thank you. I, <laughs> I popped it in and was like, oh, the next time 1988 comes up on the show, I'm bringing this movie. So that's how that happened. And then as far as the mechanic, that one was new to me. Like I said, once Jason selected it, I think I might have already had it on my Plex. And I was like, oh, I'm going to watch it. So not very exciting. What about you, Jason? How'd you see these movies? Well, I rented Action Jackson from Apple Streaming. And for the mechanic, I also had the DVD. DVD sense. Thank you. And uh, watched it that way. Delvin. Well, this guy I know, he has a Plex server. Mm, um, sounds like a cool guy. Hey, you know, I get everything. And so I it enjoyed Ezra? It was Ezra, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. It, it was. It, it was Ezra, Ezra Gallo. Ezra Gallo has a Plex server, and I watched both movies on a uh, set Plex server. Uh, okay. All right. Now it's time for your spoiler warning. Yep, we're going to talk about these films. Any plot points? I don't think there's big plot twists in either of these movies, but any any plot points are going to get covered. You have until the end of this musical break to square yourself away and go watch these films if you would like to. All right, folks, welcome back. Let me jump in with some quick information on 1988's Action Jackson. Why do they call you Action anyway? To catch a cab. No, I got you. He's a cop who carries no weapon. This Jackson is so vicious, we don't even let him have a gun. Yeah! He's a maverick who answers to no one. You might pull that boy's arm off. He had a spear. <laughs> He's a man who's no talk. I bet I can make you change your mind. And all action. How do you like your ribs? The indefatigable action jacks. The one big fella. Some action. You haven't learned your lesson. Teach me. You sure could teach Mr. T a thing or two. So allow me to lay my healing hands upon you. Cast and crew is as follows. It stars Carl Maurice Feldman Weathers, Craig T. Maurice Feldman Nelson, Vanity, Sharon, why not? Maurice Feldman Stone is directed by Craig R. Baxley, and the synopsis goes something like this. Jericho Action Jackson is a cop with a grudge. He's had just about enough of the evil automobile magnate Peter Delaplane, and he's going to take him down no matter what the cost. Here's your trivia. Ironically, I put the post about this on X recently. I said, how did this movie never get a franchise? And the first bit of trivia that I found said, the studio hoped to turn the film into a franchise, but it never happened. Dangerous Passion, 1990, a totally unrelated film, which also stars Carl Weathers and Billy D. Williams, was retitled Action Jackson 2 in some countries. <laughs> and that made me go say, what? I want to see Dangerous Passion. Let me tell you something. It's hard as hell to find. Like, I went to some of those sites. <laughs> some of those sites to try to find it. Couldn't find it. It's not on YouTube. And I actually ended up going to eBay. And basically, you can't even buy the DVD for less than maybe 15 DVD sites. 
less than 15 bucks because it's just a very rare DVD that's sort of never been ported digitally anywhere. Like it's not on any streaming. Like I said, I looked at streaming. I even went to the, to the dark web, if you will. And I couldn't find the dang thing. This seems like a Wesley Snipes special going on. (laughs) (laughs) Made that movie overseas, trying to get him some uh, money away from the eye of Uncle Sam, you know? (laughs) Maybe, I don't know. But yeah, that's the closest we ever got to Action Jackson 2 was just a retitle for the international release for the movie Dangerous Passion, which I would really like to see. And for those listeners out there that are going, is Jared Albrecht the yard sale artist? so cheap that he won't part with $15 for this movie if he wants to watch it? The answer is yes. Yes. <laughs> my, my theory is I have enough other movies to watch while I can hunt this thing down. I'll be looking at every DVD section at Goodwill and all that stuff. I will find this dang thing. I guarantee you I will. I don't care how long it takes. Anyway, trivia bullet item number two. Carl Weathers, Bill Duke, and Sonny Landham, who all appear in this movie, also had roles in 1987. Predator. In one scene, in fact, when Weathers and Vanity are walking down the sidewalk of a busy street, there are multiple film posters visible on the side of a building advertising for Predator, which I also took a screenshot of and posted on X. (laughs) And finally, pop singer, dancer, and TV personality Paula Abdul conducted the dance choreography that you see in this film. And, you know, I'm going to give you a bonus fun fact. She also did it for the movie The Running Man. She did a lot of movie choreography. She's just a multi-talented lady. Over to you, Jason. All right. Thank you for that, Jared. And now I will give you fine folks the lowdown on 2011's The Mechanic. What I do requires a certain mindset. I do assignments, designated targets. Some jobs need to look like accidents. Best jobs are the ones nobody ever knows you are there. I know I'm better than you, you know. You're a damn machine. You need someone to watch your back. This wouldn't be about Steven, now, would it? He's your son. Damn disappointment. Always has been, always will be. Harry McKenna sold this company out. It must be a mistake. You know how this company works, Mr. Bishop. He had to be removed. Sorry about your father. It was a loss for both of us. I want to know what you know. Go online. It's all on the internet. But I don't want to read it. I want to do it. Follow me. You know what a mechanic is? A hitman. Time to take your training to the next level. So what's the plan now? Time to finish the job. Impressive, huh? Those were my best teams. Guess I'll have to send more. Save the fuel. We're coming for you. You think you can get to me before I get to you? I already have. Do it. Cast and crew starred Jason Statham, Ben Foster, and Donald Sutherland. Not a bad lineup. Directed by Simon West. Synopsis goes a little something like this. Jason Statham stars as Arthur Bishop, an elite assassin with a penchant for preparedness. That's alliteration, folks. When his friend and mentor seemingly betrays the company, Bishop is sent to terminate the man's employment permanently. After reluctantly doing the deed, And feeling guilty, Bishop takes his late mentor's down-on-his-luck son under his wing and brings him into the business. While bodies can remain buried, secrets seldom do. And this act of conscience could cost Bishop his life. Trivia nuggets. Trivia nugget number one. The illegal arms dealer's mugshot, the one that Jason Statham kills with his own bathrobe, 
little tie, is that of the actual actor photoshopped onto David Bowie's mugshot from a recent drug arrest. <laughs> <laughs> so he, David Bowie's, I, I don't know why I found that amusing. Oh man, now when he fought him, I wish he would have said, "Let's dance." <laughs> Put David on Bowie your dance. red shoes and dance the blues. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, Ben Foster broke his collarbone in the scene where he brutally fights the large hitman. I believe it. I believe <laughs> it. We'll talk more about that scene later. I'm sure. And finally, actors Michael Douglas and Sylvester Stallone were both sought after for this role. But Jason Statham, he's the one who landed it. Mm, I would have given it to more like Charles Bronson. <laughs> it's well, the people who get that. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, get, I, I get the <laughs> reference. I, I got it. <laughs> yes, yes. If you go back in time, you can see. <laughs> oh. We may see it. I mean, we may see 1973's The Mechanic on Action Film Face-Off. I'd be interested. I've actually seen that one. It's pretty good. And now that we have the basics on today's contestants. Ladies and gentlemen. Test your might. uh, Let's get ready to rumble! It's a street fight. It's a street fight. Okay, guys, it's time to get it on. And let me remind you guys of Match Game. We have two films, five categories. That means Jason and I can match up to 10 possible times. I don't know his scores. He doesn't know my scores. Place your bets. How many times are we going to match? Speaking of scores, let's set your barometer appropriately. Five is right in the middle between one and 10, which means it's average. It's fine. It's something you'd see on a decent made-for-TV movie. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You got yourself a real good flick. Four, three, two, one. You have things to work on. Having said all that, let's get into round one. Put the knife away and shut your mouth. Round one is a story. How engaging or original is your story? Delvin is our guest. He gets to speak first on the story. The magnum opus, the epic, if you will, of Action Jackson. I want to share something that uh, my lovely wife, Miranda, observed. Like I, when I told her, I was like, hey, I'm going to do action from base off. And one of the movies I'm doing is Action Jackson. And, and I was like, yeah, you know, is that it, it was 80s movie, Carl Weathers or whatever. And she's like, is it based in Detroit? <laughs> and she was <laughs> and she was right <laughs> because it was like, oh, OK, black cop. Uh, where, where are we going to put this? Uh, I don't know. How about Detroit? And so <laughs> hey, that's where Axel that, Foley was from, too. <laughs> right. Exactly. And so that that's what kind of started. You know what I think about the story overall. Overall, it's it's pretty simple story. You got a cop who goes rogue sometimes. You know that's kind of his history, and then he had a history with a person, and that was the ultimate bad guy of the movie, and eventually got his guy. So as far as the story goes, pretty simple, simplistic story. There wasn't a ton to it, in my opinion. Uh, Jason, what do you think? I agree with you. It was very simple. I'll just show my cards early. I really didn't like the story. It didn't flow. To me, it's like the whole thing gets revealed by the hairdresser at the end. If it was like a naked gun type movie, like it was a straight up spoof, that would have been funny. But it's like Carl Weathers isn't really doing much detecting. He's just kind of running around. It's not Detective Jackson. I, I get it. I get it. And the other thing is, too, it was clearly capitalizing on the success of Beverly Hills Cop. So much so that there were some scenes in there that I just didn't like because Carl Weathers, to me, is Carl Maurice Feldman Weathers. And it's kind of like when we talk about when James Bond movies try to copy something else. And Carl Weathers clearly trying to copy Eddie Murphy in a couple of those scenes. Like when he's in there and he fights the folks that want to cut off his Johnson Mm, mm. and the over the top acting, you know, some of it it just came off as a little bit cringe worthy to me. So uh, I'm like I said, show my cards early, not in love with the story on this one. Well, apparently this is Jason's last episode of Action Film Face Off, which is unfortunate. (laughs) (laughs) At least this round. Hey, put those those whole match game numbers. Get them low, folks. Get them low. Get them low. 
Yeah, sure, drive dude, yourselves I'm, home tonight. I'm, I'm, o- I'm over here. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna need you to like to put a put a chain on me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I just said the story is simplistic, Jason. I didn't need all that extra. You, you not be smart. <laughs> I'm gonna. Be. <laughs> all right, everybody, calm down. Everybody, calm down. Let's shift gears. Let's go to 2011. Let's talk the mechanic. It is back to Delvin. Now, the story itself was a little bit more complex. Simple in some ways, but I mean, but more complex than Action Jackson by any means, where, you know, you had a guy, he's a mechanic, you know, and they explained what a mechanic was. And he had to do a job that he didn't want to do, but he did it because he is a professional. Then he had the inexplicable and unenviable task of having the guy who he just killed and who he respected, his son, come into the picture and the son was like, I'm, I'm lost, man. I got, I got nothing to do. And so, you know, Statham could have done, you know, a couple of things. He could have just told him to beat it. I don't care. Or he could have trained him since the guy was aware of what it is that his dad also did. Uh, so it made for at least an interesting story. It, even though there's like the, the hink in it that I would give was that very first job when Jason Statham asked him to do a thing and then he didn't do that thing, he would have been done. He would have been D-U-N. No more, period. So that was the only hink in the story that they had to keep the story going. And so they did. That was the only part of that simple story that I had a problem with. Back to you, Jason. I agree. This one is a little more fleshed out than Action Jackson. I did like the plot point of the hitman training the son of the hitman that he just killed, who had trained him. That is good dramatic tension. That's a good element in the story. I agree with you 110%. I watched it with Drake, my son. You know, we both said at that, it's like, I'd say this isn't working out, man. You didn't pass your probationary period. (laughs) You're going to have to move along. To me, the other part that that really kind of a sore spot for the movie, the big reveal, which, I mean, I wasn't really fooled um, that they were setting up the Donald Sutherland character for two reasons. One, when the big boss shows him the ledger and says, you can see here where old boy was filling up his bank account, the man that walks around with a pistol inscribed with victory loves preparation probably would have hid that money a little bit better. (laughs) You know, that would have been my first clue. And then the big one was the reveal at the end when the hitman that he thought was dead turns out to be alive. And that's, again, kind of like what I was saying with Action Jackson and the random encounter with the hairdresser, just this random encounter at the airport. Like, oh, hey, aren't you supposed to be dead? Let's fight. You know, and then and then that's where everything gets revealed. So that seemed a little, eh, they, they had to connect the dots some way. And that was just a bit of a lazy writing. So all in all, I agree with Delvin, a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit better writing than Action Jackson, but some pretty significant flaws in it as well. I'll just tack on that. I never bought Donald Sutherland betraying the company. A, he's just too likable. B, I've seen enough movies to know that that's not how it's going to play out. And what really tipped it for me is he never denied it. That's the thing an innocent man does. Like, I, I don't even have to deny it because, I, I did, you know, I'm not going to try to convince you. Anyway, I, he was great in the movie. Though. Donald Sutherland's only in it for 15 minutes or so, but he was great. Really good. It's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, yeah, very good. Added, added that needed gravitas. Yes, sir. Okay. Nothing left to do but to score them. I think things are going to get weird and wild in this round, folks. So uh, let's find out. Jason, one to ten, action Jackson. Let's just get through this together. Story. I'm afraid to say it, but I'm giving it a five. <laughs> <laughs> Match and- game, Jared? Match game? <laughs> Your brother Jared gave it a seven. <laughs> what I thought about it, I thought my thinking was a lot like Delvin's. I was like, it's basic, it's simple. To me, I was like, it's pretty much a six. But then I I do reward simple with good execution, and it's so 1988 that it's wonderful to me. So I I got I caught up in the 80sness of it. You know how much I love that stuff. So I gave it a seven. So Jason and I aren't normally that far apart, but hey, stranger things have happened. I think we're going to be far apart again. 
pretty soon the mechanic probably about the same distance here because I, I thought the mechanic was a little bit better but i landed on a six for that one. Oh my gosh match game oh wow yeah great. i have it at a six as well uh, that's one where i kind of started it at a seven because i was like it's it's good and it's kind of clever but then i was like eh, it's a remake so you don't get originality points for it so i gave it a six fair and uh, I still haven't seen the original, though. Would love to. This brings us to Delvin Sniper Bullet. Which movie story did you like better? Just want to say good points uh, by both of you. Legit. My point's going to go to the mechanic. I think that the mechanic had a slightly more original storyline uh, than Action Jackson. Simple as that. All right. That's the end of the uh, first round. All right. Well, I'll pick it up with round two. And round two is the hero. We're going to see how fun and exciting is the hero and the hero's entourage for these movies. And again, let's go ahead and pass it over to our guest Delvin here and see what he thought about the hero, Carl Weathers, in Action Jackson. Carl Weathers was inimitable. He, there's so many good things to say about him, in my opinion, on this movie. He was an 80s hero. And you know what 80s heroes mean, right? Like, we've seen memes at this point, right? Like, here are what my heroes look like growing up. And it's like 80s heroes, and they're showing, like, Sly Stallone with the gun and Rambo. And you got, like, the Terminator and freaking Schwarzenegger looking all jacked and buff. And you could very easily have Carl Weathers because bro was chiseled. <laughs> for this movie. Like, you could freaking draw an Etch-A-Sketch or something like on his freak. I, just, he was freaking jacked for this movie. So there was that part of it. And then it, it was almost like this was his ultimate action movie tryout to see if he was going to make that huge leap like a Schwarzenegger made. You get what I'm saying? Like, they had him doing some comedy beats. They had him cracking some one-liners that were like legitimately funny. They had him doing the action beat. They had him doing sensitivity beats. They had him doing absolutely the gruff beat. And then they had him doing some beat em up action too. They had him doing a little bit of everything. And to me, they, it was all done to showcase his level of talent and ability. And all of it shown through brightly for me in this action, Jackson. Jared? Same I'm flabbergasted that this didn't become a franchise. I'm flabbergasted that Carl Weathers didn't get more leading role action. Like you said, that this is his kind of chance to step up. And I, the only answer I can come up with is maybe he was just a little late because this was 88. I often have, have said that I thought the the death of the muscle-bound 80s action hero was kind of ironically enough, the movie The Last Action Hero with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I'm not besmirching. I love that movie. But that movie was so self-aware that this whole thing was a thing. That's only five years later. So that's my one way of saying, maybe that's why he didn't make it. But then I have to double back on myself and say, no, this is when Die Hard came out. And Bruce Willis absolutely made the leap to an act. And what a much more unlikely leap than a guy like Carl Weathers, too. So I don't know. I heard some stuff online. I can't it's online, so I can't confirm or deny it. But I did hear some people say the reason this didn't become a franchise is Carl Weathers was kind of a little difficult to work with and hadn't humbled himself very much yet by that point, which could be true. Could have been caught up in things. I don't know. I'm not going to pass judgment on that, but he's fantastic in this movie. I would love to have seen a freaking trilogy quad sequent six or seven more of these, <laughs> you know. Uh, and you know what? It's not too late. If they came out tomorrow, because that man is still around. He's in The Mandalorian. If they came out tomorrow and said, Action Jackson's coming out of retirement for one more case, I'd be like, they're going to put this old man in front. Yeah, I'm going to watch it. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm going to watch it. <laughs> so, hey, they're doing it with Eddie Murphy, right? Beverly Hills Cop 4 is coming out. So, there you have it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. just very quick, very quickly, Jason, if they did a prequel and used a younger person, it still like would work. Like or, uh, the dude who plays in Creed. Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, Michael B. Jordan could, could pull this off. Easily. How would it be if it was like Action Jackson and Son and, and have like Carl <laughs> Weathers and Michael B. Jordan in that movie? <laughs> that would be spectacular. <laughs> Take my money. 
All right. Speaking of taking money, let's move over to the mechanic. And uh, Delvin, what are your thoughts on Jason Statham and his role as Arthur Bishop in the mechanic? I thought he was likable enough, but I will use I will use your phrase and I, I will use it, you know, the proper way. Carl Weathers, he didn't have to explain what he did. They spent the first five minutes of the movie, other people were explaining it for him. Like, so that was more Pope in the pool. But in the case of Jason Statham and the mechanic, he described everything that he did. And it was sort of like, mm, like I would rather, especially someone like Statham, Statham is known for his action and his dynamics. Like they should have just like let him go out and do that first job, which was very, very impressive and sort of let that speak for himself. And even without him saying anything after he did the job, go back to his place and start like taking down stuff and then gets a call and says, all right, we got another job for you. And he starts putting up more stuff. And that would have given you everything that you needed to know about what it is that a mechanic does rather than Jason Satham giving all that exposition that he did. So that was the difference with me. Like, it, 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 and other than that, like he didn't show a ton of range. He was more just stoic. I mean, which you know, I, I I have never you know had to do a mechanic's job, so I would imagine that maybe a mechanic would have to be stoic. It, he had to give less than what I felt Carl Weathers had to give, and that makes the difference for me. Yeah, I gotta agree with you. I didn't really think about it in those terms, but replaying that first scene in my head, I'll steal a quote from you, say less. I think that would have served that movie well. Really good point. Jared, what are your thoughts? Unfortunately, this is probably one of my least favorite Statham appearances. And I watched the movie and something about the whole movie didn't set right with me. There's plenty about it I like, don't get me wrong, but like this overall feeling of unsettling, I was like, what is it that about this movie that's bugging me? And one of the cool things about being fancy and having Plex is, is when you pull up the movie, it will show you a bunch of the Rotten Tomatoes write-ups, like the little things. And I started reading through them, and one of them just really hit home for me. And he was like, the problem with this movie is that there are two likable characters one of which dies in the first 15 minutes and the other one dies later. And he's talking about the, the old black dude at the docks. The other one dies in the second half of the film. He's like, there's no other characters that are likable at all. And you think about it. Yeah. Statham's not likable. The Ben Foster character is not likable. The bad guys aren't likable. The women in their lives is two prostitutes really, you know, and they're, there's no one to root for. And that's why I was like, Statham turns in a good performance and the action's hot like you expect from him, but he's not likable. I don't root for him. I don't root against him, but I'm just like, everyone in this movie is icky and the two characters who aren't icky are killed. So that's where I'm at. Yeah, this is definitely one of those, you know, I think Van would say like one of those Parker novels, right? You, mm -hmm. you like him because you appreciate his efficiency, his yes. professionalism. Yes. And the skill he brings to the job. But if you're looking for a moral lesson here, you're not really going to get one. I mean, he played a very similar character in The Transporter. A very professional guy, but somehow still likable. More likable than he was here. Yeah, I do not disagree at all. Well, I think that's it. All we got to do is score him. So, Jared, <laughs> dare I ask... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I flirted with a 10 on Action Jack. I flirted with a 10. Oh, I, I was up, wondering. I ended up giving him a 9, but I was like, oh, you are you are so close to, like, freaking Sean Connery and Goldfinger to me right now. Like, he's just so much fun to watch. You're sitting there batting your eyes like oh, this. Like, oh, oh, you. You. Oh, you. Oh, and I, speaking of which, even on the movie poster, it's very James Bond-esque. It is. It looks, you know. Yeah. So I just think he absolutely delivered. And as opposed to the mechanic, you absolutely root for him. We didn't even mention the fact that, like, it's so over the top. Like, he's a Harvard trained lawyer who decided to just go kick ass for the cops one day. You know, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's no sense, but it's so wonderful to watch. I liked it. I thought it made him very multi dimensional. And 
it showed I, I appreciated that part of the film because it shows him at that fancy party carrying on a legal conversation with the judge. And these people actually like him. He's mm-hmm. got charisma. He's mm-hmm. tough. You know, I, I and, think it's what kind of separates it from a and we've covered some of these on the show before and we love them, but a black exploitation film. It, yeah. it puts him in a whole other league. He, he fits in in so many social situations. Yeah, you know, yep. Shaft is fun to watch. I don't know if he'd have so much fun in a in one of those cocktail parties, but you know. And then, boy, that scene when he's staring down that cab driver. <laughs> <laughs> Come and give me, you son of a! <laughs> yeah, that scene <laughs> when he like, when he literally yeah. ran fifty miles an hour to keep up with the cab. That was. Oh. Good. Oh, man, I was dying. Oh, it was great. Okay, I guess I better say my score. My score, not quite as high as yours, but an eight. Man, solid, solid performance. Definitely, we're in elite-level territory with old Carl Weathers as Jericho Jackson. All right, so I'm not feeling as much love from you for Jason Statham and the mechanic. Where did we land? I ended up giving him a six. He's not going to fall below made for TV because it's still Jason Statham. You know, Jason Statham, the transporter is probably an eight for me, you know, but this one, that reviewer hit the nail on the head. There's just not any likable characters. So yeah, I ended up giving him a six. I didn't go quite that low, but I gave him a seven. I kind of compared him. I was like, oh, you know, I, I get he's not very likable, but I don't think he's meant to be likable in this film. So I guess just... Basing it on the, is it a preferred role for me? No, but was it still a good, solid performance? Yes. So, seven for me. This may not fit here, but when him and and the Ben Foster character finally got the quote-unquote revenge and killed the guy who was behind everything, both those guys entered both, emptied both of their magazines. Five minutes later. Blam, 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 blam. Damn. Okay. Yeah, well, we'll get into that a little bit more. Yeah, I certainly will. We go go into this. I need to get a sniper bullet from Delvin though. I think I know where this one's going, but let's formally put it in the category. Carl Weathers, Action Jackson, Jason Statham, the mechanic. I mean, the guy's name is Jericho Jackson. No one's actual name is Jericho Jackson. <laughs> Those just seem After like... 1988, it probably was. <laughs> <laughs> but it is so cool when they're like, his name is Jericho Jackson. I was like, ooh. <laughs> So, yes, like my, my bullet goes to Carl Weathers uh, and Action Jackson up for this one for that reason and any other reasons. <laughs> All right. If I'd seen this in 88, I probably one of my son's name probably would have been Jericho Jackson. All this <laughs> if it's the J scheme, you know, you got Jer- Jason, Jericho. Jericho. <laughs> All right, Jared, back to you. All right. It must mean it's time for round three. I'll be back. Round three is the villain. How menacing is your villain? How entertaining is your villain? Come on, (laughs) y'all. Come on now. We're going to talk villains. We're going to go start 1988 with Action Jackson, where if I told you that Coach was going to be a villain for Carl Weathers, and he'd be kind of believable, (laughs) would you believe me? Jason, you get to talk first this time. We've talked about it before. Is your villain memorable, right? I got to say, old Craig T is pretty memorable in this film. He both exudes eh, smarminess, sliminess, uh, the way he treats the women in his life in the movie. He, He just kills his wife in cold blood. You know, just the way he enjoys belittling people. The way he enjoyed belittling Action Jackson at the party. It's like, you hate this guy. And that's what you want your villain to do. Plus, plus, he's a formidable opponent. He's not just slimy. He can also throw hands in the final act and do it like, I mean, it's kind of tough to physically match up against Carl Weathers, but he does a pretty darn good job of it. Craig T's not a small man either. And they kind of show off his little martial arts skills earlier in the show. 
So I think it's just a good combination of having somebody that you just hate. He's just smarmy. He's a rich and he can also throw hands and be a physical foil for the hero. Yeah, I was wildly surprised by how good he was. Like you mentioned, so good with the cut downs. It's like, I guess that's all we have to talk about today, Lieutenant. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, Sergeant, isn't it? Sergeant. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> stinger. <laughs> anyway, it's Delvin's turn. I agree with everything that Jason said. Uh, I never expected Craig T. Nelson. I don't, if I've seen him in a movie, and I probably have, I can't recall off the top of my head. And I remember him mainly from Coach. I've seen episodes of Coach uh, ABC because, you know, we were fortunate enough in a sense to grow up in a time where everybody was watching the same thing at once. So, like, I, I have seen episodes of Coach because I was a kid sitting at home watching network TV. And Coach was on, you know, ABC. I still remember the dang channel. So I didn't expect to see him like this. And he definitely shows some chops because you're right. Smarmy is just a good word for it. Where And then I even appreciate it at the end where he kind of pulls a, no, this isn't for me. Like, I'm not trying to be president one day. I just want to be that power broker for the president. I want to be the man that the president goes to. And this is me demonstrating that that chops. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> so how is that worse? So how it's worse. <laughs> that, 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 that's that. That that is what he wants. It's like, I don't need to be a king. I just need to be a good bishop. Like, OK, okay. okay. So that there is that part of it. And his probably the most surprised that I was with the whole thing was like Sharon Stone was his wife. He just offed her. And it was like. Oh my God, <laughs> that was, that was cold blooded. Like, just like, no, you got in my way. And because you got in my way, you must go. End of equation. Dang. He even so talked has... about his screw up son, who I don't think we ever got to meet. But he even talked about, yeah, I might have to eliminate him too. I was like, yeah, it's dang, a... man. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, for him, it was just math. It was math. His wife and kid, math. You know, two and two equals. <laughs> so he did a lot to show that he was cold blooded and I, I fully bought into it. I, I bought into all of it. Yeah. All right. So the Craig T. Nelson as a villain love fest begins. All right. Let's shift dim gears. Let's go to 2011. And there's, a, there's kind of a little column A, column B villainy thing going on here. I'll let Jason just go. Yeah, this one was a little bit tough because... If you look at the villain as the head of the company, the one that sets all this into motion by tricking Jason Statham into killing his friend and mentor, and he's like, nah, he's kind of a, <laughs> you know, not very memorable. If you look at it more of like we talked about, these aren't, we couldn't really call these heroes. I guess protagonist would be the correct term. So if you look at Ben Foster, as the villain in this scenario, then I think I would give it a much higher score, which is the way I chose to look at it. I think Ben Foster did a fantastic job. In fact, I'd say his performance outside of maybe Donald Sutherland's is the best in this film. I really gained an appreciation of him as an actor watching this. That's a very good performance that he gives and he displays such a range of emotions through the whole thing and at the end of it it's life come in full circle right jason statham killed his father and now he has the opportunity to kill his mentor see the cycle perpetuate he almost did it <laughs> almost pulled it off but man jason statham could do that tuck and roll up truck <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But at any rate, so yeah, I think I'll just end it there. I, I, I think if you look at it from Ben Foster's performance as the villain, I think that's a little bit more memorable than the cardboard cutout <laughs> yeah. villain that gets ended in the third act. I would agree with you on that. It was funny, you know, I'm watching it the whole time, and I'm like, where do I know this guy from? Because I'm not familiar with a lot of Ben Foster movies. And then I was like, he's Spacker Dave from The Punisher movie. <laughs> He is Spacker Dave. I was yeah, like, Spacker he... Dave. Good to see I, you, buddy. 
I believe he also played uh, Angel in the yes X-Men. in X three. Yeah, X Men three. Yep, that would explain why I didn't remember him then. <laughs> anyway, Delva, it's your turn to talk. What do you think about the villainy of the mechanic? It's there's plenty of it. I'm thinking the main villain was, you know, the, you know, secret shadow corporation. So ultimately, I guess the big villain is capitalism. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I am kidding. Um, it is. So, you know, they tried their best to make, you know, the shadowy guy. They gave him, you know, him, you know, negotiating with my daughter. Like, I don't even know why you tried to make him human. You know, because he's kind of an a-hole, right? Like... I don't like this person, and so I'm going to have him off. And it really is ultimately to help my business? You're not a good guy, fella. Uh, not at all. And then when the chips came down to it, like he talked all tough, and then he's like, oh, crap, they're in the building. Uh, let me change my let me change my pants, and then we're going to get out of here. Like, um, you're not really acquitting yourself as an ultimate bad guy. At his demise, he just ran away until he got caught and executed. So I wasn't really a fan of that. So if I were to go with Foster, then I think that would be a little bit more compelling, even though it's hard for me to see him as the bad guy. He was just seeking revenge and that doesn't make him the bad guy. I'd probably want to go after somebody that <laughs> off my dad too, and then gassed me up the entire time instead of just telling me from the start that he did it. That Probably would have been a safer play for Jason Statham to do. Like, yeah, I did it. You know, I had to do it as a job. Your dad knew the job. If you're still read about it, okay, you can come after me. Of course, that wouldn't have been nearly as exciting of a movie. But it was. it's hard for me to see a Foster as the villain here. So I have to kind of go with the generic of, like, quote, unquote, the corporation. Mm, mm -hmm. I see. And I, I agree with those thoughts. I know enough about the original mechanic, even though I haven't seen it, to know that the young Ben Foster character is played by my main man, Jan Michael Vincent, star right. of Airwolf. <laughs> so I'm excited to see this. Dun, 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 <laughs> Anyways, let's score them. Man, I, you know, Craig T. Nelson, we all kind of liked him quite a bit. Jason, to the tune of. I liked him to the tune of a seven. I can't quite put him at the eight where Carl Weathers in the film, but definitely holding his own. So seven for me. Well, if you remember, I gave Carl Weathers a nine, so I absolutely gave Craig T an eight in this one. Yeah, I kind of <laughs> figured. <laughs> I even texted Del because Delvin texted me. He's like, hey, I just finished it watching Action Jackson. And I think my first response was, bet you didn't predict Coach was going to be such a good villain. <laughs> he was like, no, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> The Mechanic, 1 to 10 for the villainy. You can kind of pick and choose, as we all know we have. What would you come up with? I went the route where I consider Ben Foster the villain. So, And I thought he was on par as Craig T. Nelson, if I compared the two of them. So I gave him a 7 as well. You probably could predict my 6 on this one. <laughs> I mean, I, I do think Foster turned in a good performance, but I'm kind of more in the Delvin camp of I thought the villain was really just kind of the head of the organization. He was so generic like foster just kind of falls into a no man's land you know he's kind yeah. of this kind of that we didn't even talk about the extra villainy of like the weirdo cult leader guy that they had to go kill or oh they just went through a bunch of dudes I mean, yeah yeah and so anyways it gets a little muddy so even though i gave it a six it's almost like the villainy was so spread out you know sometimes you accumulate sometimes you average i feel like this is more of an average delvin you get the sniper bullet Thank you, sir. Uh, locked and loaded, and um, I'm firing my bullet for Action Jackson. Uh, Craig T surprised me in a very pleasant way. There you have it. That's the end of round three. All right, picking it up from here, it's time to talk about spectacle in round four. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate a bill. By spectacle, we mean the fight choreography, the effects. We mean the cinematography the score, all the good stuff that you put into a great action film and see what comes out. Jared, you get to kick it off. Let's talk about the spectacle of Action Jackson. Well, sir, <laughs> this is a spectacle movie. It, as Delva mentioned earlier, it gives you a lot of variety. You get this real over-the-top action. You get some, as you mentioned, Jason, maybe some over-the-top comedy. There's a good blend of it. I always felt like it was well shot. 
I thought it was engaging. We often talk about in Spectacle Round, you know, are you looking at your social media, are you checking your phone, blah, blah, blah. Not at all. Not at all. You know, I oftentimes have an ear for the music and the score. And this one, it's going to be much more about the music. It's vanity, you know, and she's really talented. You get that good 80s music in there. Had a great end credits song, too. It's just, it's a lot to see and a lot to listen to. And congratulations, Craig R. Baxley, the director. You put together something that's just, when you think a, a whole package of just 80s action fun, it's got it all. So, yeah, solid score coming from me. Yeah, I agree. There's something about those 80s action movies that when, when you see one, when you see a good one, you want to go out, hit the gym, and then buy a gun. That's just something. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Delvin, what did you think about the spectacle of Action Jackson? I have to go a little lowbrow here. And, and can I help it? Like, yeah, like Vanity did have some good songs. And like those songs are like, hey, I absolutely want to have sex with you. <laughs> You know and what? Was, Mutual vanity. <laughs> <laughs> and it was and it was vanity. So I'm like, wow. yeah, yeah, go on. <laughs> Do go on. Yes. You have my interest. Yeah. You're saying that you want to have sex with, with me? Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, whew. what's a handkerchief? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. So, you know, there was there was that part of it in I say that you got a little bit of the grittiness of Detroit as well. And I appreciated that too. Because much like my guy Spider-Man, like everybody would say that, you know, one of the big supporting characters in any Spider-Man movie or comic book would be the city of New York itself. And so you have to bring that in, especially with a cop movie, right? Like you want to get that feel of the grittiness or, or not grittiness, maybe glitziness, depending on the city. But Detroit, urban, gritty. And that's definitely what it depicted. I definitely think it was a heck of a scene to watch at the end where Craig T's house, I'm blanking on his memorable ass name. Della Plain, I think was his. D- Della yeah, Plain. I think yeah. That, yeah, that sounds right. His house was so baller that Action Jackson took the car that he manufactured and drove it through his house the whole way. Like, oh, man, you can drive my car through it. Like, I'm good grief. That dude Up the had stairs. A Up, Up the, the stairs. <laughs> It, uh, through the hallway. Like, what? So, yes, that was a heck of a spectacle, too. So it was definitely good spectacle and definitely uh, attention grabbing uh, for each scene. Even like the slummy hotel that uh, Vanity and he stayed in. That, again, it just goes into the grittiness of the city. That's a really good point. It made me remember. I love that opening credit where you see the city and you see it through the eyes of the two police officers that are watching that kid. As he's about to try to mug that that big lady of her purse, and they're like, "Oh, don't do it, kid." They're giving like, <laughs> those like, guys were hilarious. <laughs> they, and then, and then the, the woman starts beating the dude with the person. No, just let it happen. Go, <laughs> like, should we call an ambulance? <laughs> nah, just let it happen. <laughs> Jason, am I crazy or was one of those cops? Was that Thomas Wilson from Back to the Future? Because I think it might have been. The Biff you might be right. I think, I think the white cop was Biff from Biff from Back to the Future. It might have been. I don't know. I don't I'll look know. into it while you yeah. continue. You have to dive into that. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about the spectacle for the mechanic. I mean, I got to say there was some spectacle in there. There are some some pretty good scenes. But uh, Jared, would you would you think of the spectacle and mechanic? Uh, as we come into that, I did some research in the background, and yep, Thomas F. Wilson. Biff himself was the guy. Anyways, let's get to the mechanic. It, you're right. Uh, the spectacle here was good. Uh, very good. Uh, it, it leans heavily in its action scenes. It, the real spectacle is in the action scenes. I can't, off the top of my head, is super memorable about the music or anything like that. It's, it really just boils down to, I think the two things it did best in spectacle was, of course, executing action scenes that were just brutal and gripping. And that sort of thriller type scene that you would get in like a heist movie or whatever, where they're like trying to hide in the wall and not be noticed by like that real kind of on the edge of your seat type of engagement. I thought those two things were done well. You know, overall, I, I, I've i admitted it. I, I can admit it for both these movies. and You've probably already figured it out. I have a huge bias for Axe and Jackson because it's just it's my wheelhouse. It's an 80s over the top kablooey, you know, whatever. And and. 
and my bias against the mechanic is that it is so it is real it's a dark movie like again there's no real hero there's no one who's very likable except for Donald Sutherland he didn't make it and then the dude at the docks he didn't make it right so I, I do have this bias against it to where it just it feels dirty or grimy too, a little too dirty or grimy for me and if I'm honest, that could actually be a plus as far as Spectacle goes, because it's setting a mood. You know, it's not a mood I enjoy, but I don't know if you're supposed to enjoy this. You know, it's it's a dirty business. So, yeah, that's my highfalutin way of saying, yeah, they got a lot of stuff that was engaging and, and good, and, and they'll get a good score from me. But uh, I love Action Jackson. <laughs> well, I think, I think we know where the higher score is going on this one. No surprise, folks. But let's hear what Delvin has to say. Do you agree, disagree, anything to add? I largely agree with Jared. Spectacle, guys, for me, is always a difficult one. It can be defined in so many different ways. So the spectacle for one movie, even an action movie, can be different from the, you know, the spectacle of another action movie. And this is certainly the case because both were action movies, but different types of action movies. One was in the 80s and you had a uh, police officer. We had to see the city and the seediness of the city already discussed. In this one, they went from location to location, but the point wasn't really the location, it was the characters. And so the locations didn't play as important of a role. The things that I remember the most from the mechanic were the very cool action scenes, particularly uh, the fight scene with Ben Foster and that big dude. Oh my God. Like, by the time that that big dude walked barefoot across broken glass to get to him, I literally recoiled. It was like, huh, oh, my God. <laughs> it was visceral. It shocked me to see that. And it was, of course, intentionally done. So in its own way, it absolutely gripped my attention. Uh, so it, it kind of makes it tough. It's like it's really like my sniper bullet is going to be up for me to decide I guess which one I thought was more effective in what it did. And I, I'm I'm still debating it <laughs> even right now, actually. It, it, this is going to be a tough one for me. Yeah, you're right. It is two different flavors of spectacle. Very much so. Very good points. Well, I think it's time to score them up. Uh, Jared, let's just, we'll do the formality here. What? <laughs> How many tens did you give the spectacle? Uh, I, I, he still, Action Jackson still has not garnered a ten. Okay, but all it, right, but it got a nine. Uh, just, a, <laughs> it's just, it's one of those movies. I where, think that's what you gave Terminator Two, man. I, 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 you know, probably. <laughs> but it's just one of those movies that has so much going for it. That, this is only the second time I've watched it in my life, but like, I, I have that distinct feeling that's one I can just always put on and make me smile and just be like, it's like a comfort movie to me now. Yeah. And so, yeah, I gave it a nine. Well, I got to tell you, I looked at it from the perspective of a view to a kill. And I think I liked the spectacle about the same. So I gave it a seven. You know, that's I, absolutely fair. And I know I am not being fair because I'm so taken <laughs> with this damn movie. So that's all right. I'm trying to be objective here. I'm trying to be a good judge. But I will say that, like, there's a part where that that little dude was threatening to cut his balls off with a knife, and when he just picks old boy up and like slams him through that cabinet, that's tight. <laughs> and and when he throws Sonny Lanham from out of a window into the window of another building, <laughs> just like across the house, I was like, that's pretty cool too. So anyway, seven for me. Let's move on to the mechanic. What did you give the score there? I will join you. Well, I don't know if I'm joining you in the mechanic, but I'll join your Action Jackson score. I gave it a seven. Again, I, it wasn't my taste. It was too, a little too dirty for me, a little too grimy, but I can't lie. It held my attention. I didn't check social media and all that. I watched the dang movie. So that's got to yeah. say something. Yeah, I, I found myself exactly in the position Delvin's finding himself right now. <laughs> it's like, it's about even. And unlike Delvin, who has the unenviable task of having one point to give, I could give this a seven as well, which I did. Hey, match game number two. All right. So, Delvin, it's decision time. Who are we giving it to, Action Jackson or The Mechanic? Man, it's tough. I'm going to go with the one that gave me like, the biggest 
jump. And that was the mechanic because like that fight scene alone was so brutal. And we hadn't even gotten to fight scenes, I know. But like, I couldn't imagine <laughs> being so angry at someone that I am going to walk across broken glass to get to them. So that that continues to stick out to me. And Jason, and that's not even Jason. Jason Say the one even in that scene. And he has some cool action scenes himself, but that one sticks out to me. And if it sticks out to me that vividly, it's for a reason. So I'll give that uh, sniper bullet to the mechanic. Yeah, Jason Statham would have just given that guy the roofie and been done with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what pro, Jason Albrecht would have done, too. There's no way I'm going back there. Would have been much easier. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, that's a wrap, folks, for Spectacle. Jared, passing it back to you. That must mean it's time for round five. You could ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Round five is best action scene, so it's kind of time to really pass it back to Jason and see how he broke down the action scenes in these two films. Let's start with Action Jackson. Uh, Jason, how did you break it down? Well, I had five scenes from Action Jackson that I thought warranted some discussion. Number one was the cab chase. I thought that cab chase was pretty cool. That was a lot of fun. Boy, you got a front flip over there. It did. Oh, man. It was, yeah, that was funny. <laughs> Then the second one was the drug dealer fight with Sonny Landon from Predator. I thought that was a good one. <laughs> he, like, shoots him up with his own heroin. That was funny. <laughs> and then when he's fighting those gang members, the ones that were threatening to cut his nuts off, I thought that was also a good one. And then fighting the uh, invisible men at the end when he, they have him tied up and he has to escape. And finally, fighting Craig T. Nelson in the final action scene. Oof, man, that's a lot of good stuff in there. Like, if you were forced to pick one, which one are you going to go with? I liked when he fought Sonny Landham, the drug dealer in that room. That was a good, brutal fight that ended up with Sonny Landham going out one window into another window. <laughs> <laughs> but that just tickles me pink. So I'm going to go with that one. All right. Dolphin, what was your favorite action scene? And then Action Jackson. It's not always this way, but I'm going to go with the end one. I feel it was the most emotionally pitched one of where like both of them had sort of gotten like small wins on each other. And finally, you know, the whole gig was up and, and Action Jackson was like, I got you, man. And we need to settle this. And both of them had reasons to go at each other hard, literally to the death. I like there too when those 80s movies, when the hero shoots the villain. And they're like dinner plate size holes rip into their shirts. And then and then he goes, oh, he got me too. And it's like, it looks like he got shot with a BB or something. <laughs> 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 and and I, I, I do want to add one thing. Yeah, Craig T. Nelson is not a small dude. He's not. However, <laughs> I wouldn't have been mad either if it, like, you know, like, if you oh you want to man up you know once you put your put your gun down I'm gonna put my gun down too psych blam. <laughs> <laughs> because it's Carl Weathers and the dude was built like a tank I ain't fighting that not fair no mm -hmm. no, no mm -hmm. I ain't Jason which which action scene do you think would uh, how do you like your ribs fall into that I, I just <laughs> I just realized I forgot that because I did come up with a whole bunch of names for him too. I'm just like, that one might be my favorite. I guess that's when he kind of escaped. I, I gave it a name. I worked, I gave it a name. <laughs> I called it, well done. <laughs> just because that's how he likes his. <laughs> well, that's the one I'm going to pick because that just cracked me up. All right. The one I picked, I called it, uh, Sonny, you've changed since the jungle, man. <laughs> <laughs> you've changed, man. <laughs> Delvin picked the final fight. What do you got on that? I called that one, I'm going to put you in a full Nelson. <laughs> because it's... Craig T. Nelson. You're pitching some gold tonight. <laughs> I, I had some good ones. I can't believe I forgot. Okay, the cab chase, I called that one. I'm going to keep the meter running on this ass whooping. <laughs> and then finding the gang members, you ain't getting these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I think that's it. All right. Those are what I got. Damn, I can't believe I forgot... I worked so hard. You worked, you worked your butt off. Well, we got it in there. So, all right, let's go to the mechanic. And how did you break it down? Which is a formality because we're all going to give it to the Ben Foster fights the giant dude. But whatever. 
<laughs> well, there was a couple other good ones in there, but yeah. Okay, four action scenes here. Yeah, because like the opening scene, although cool, not really an action scene. It was more like Delvin was saying, it was more of a gripping tension scene. So number one, the first big one I thought was that bodyguard fight. And I called that one, I hope his assassin kit can he loses this, man. <laughs> this is going to be bad for him. Jason always gives me one. I probably have to do some bleep. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that, that was that was the one. Well, actually, yeah. there's another one in here. You may. Okay. Oh, well, there's more than one. <laughs> there's, there's Okay. Where they assassinate the megachurch dude. And I called this one. I said. Editor's note. Imagine a 13 second long bleep right here. <laughs> He, the right he, 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 he's just gonna beep all of that out. I, yeah. I, I, you, want, yeah. you want me to sing it? Because it sounds worse. No, 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 no. We're, good. We're good. Okay. And then the third one was when they escape the assassins, where he fights the guy at the dock, the guys at the docks, and then Ben Foster has to shoot the dudes in the house left-handed. And I called that one. Uh, Nothing gets by you. By you. Uh, all right. Took by me a second. You. Yeah. <laughs> That was pretty dope, though, with how fast he was with the left hand. I oh, was, man, that was, yeah. That was pretty impressive. Yeah, he figured it out quick. And then the final one was the payback on the big boss, that final action scene. And I said, come on, because it was like, there was some wild stuff going on. There was like a bus that just happened to be there and a truck that just happened to be there. I just called this one uh, just like we drew it up. <laughs> yep, exactly as planned. Because <laughs> there was some crazy stuff happening in that last act. All right, Man. let me just do a time saver. Is anyone here not picking Ben Foster fighting the big dude? No, nah, Ben Foster fighting the big dude. Yes, yeah, exactly. Another problem I have with this movie. It's like it's like Living Daylights. The best fight does not involve the main character. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Anyways, yep. let's score these things. Jason, let's go back. Action Jackson. Uh, we all picked something different. Uh, Jason, what did you one to ten for your action scene? I scored that one a seven. Uh, match game number three, I would probably score every scene a seven, honestly, in Action Jackson. They all mm -hmm. have something memorable. I, in fact, when I was watching it this time, and my teenage son Jordan was home, boy, as soon as the taxi thing started, I was like, Jordan, Jordan, come out. You're going to want to watch this. You're going to watch this. And we did that front flip over the car. Jordan was like, what? <laughs> was like, yeah, this is great. This is great. Welcome to the 80s. Yes. <laughs> over the mechanic, Jason. One to ten, uh, we all picked the same fight. Is brutal and memorable. What do you got it? That was elite level stuff. That was an eight for me. We're gonna wrap this up with a double match game then, because I also gave it an eight, and it's over to Delvin to which movie he thought had the better action scenes. And I guess it's really just up to taste. Do you like the gritty involvement or the eighties whammo kablamo? I don't mind eighties whammo kablamo because I mean it's where we all grew up. You know, like. That'd be like, you know, turning my back on my own childhood. And, you know, you just don't do that in Birmingham. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. <laughs> With that said, I'm going to give it to the mechanic because that scene was, if it were to play out that way, and I'm, I'm, I have a little bit extra to add on that, like when we talk deductions, but if it were to play out that way, I mean, that was brutally realistic. And you know what a fan I am of just those brutally realistic scenes that plays a little bit more to me than some of the cartoony ish of the 80s even though that last fight with craig t was a legit good fight but i think that the, the ultimate scene in mechanics fight was a little bit better definitely memorable like i said that was you felt it you you felt that so yeah it's uh i wouldn't fight you on that no pun intended you know i think old ben foster's character just wanted to hurt people I think that's, he just wanted to hurt people. You know that phrase, of course. Hurt people, hurt, hurt people. people, hurt people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that is it for round five. All right. Well, we've almost got this thing buttoned up. But before we do, we got one little bit of business that we have to do. Don't force me to fight because you won't like my way of fighting. And that is the deduction round. Round six, the round of the ridiculous. Jared. Movie number one, Action Jackson. This may come as a shock to you, Jason. But I have a bonus point for Action Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was on the scene of my team, man. <laughs> I have a plus one. Because we didn't even mention him. 
He was in one scene and one scene only, but my boy Robert Davi Sanchez himself from License to Kill shows up in this movie. So I'm like, oh, it's Robert Davi plus one. <laughs> That's all I have. Well, I didn't plan for this, but if you get to do it, then I'm going to do it too and give plus one because my man, Bill Duke, was in this movie as the chief of police and he's awesome. So plus one for Bill Duke. <laughs> We're just totally, you know, we, this is our show. We do what we want. We can right. add subtract whatever we want. All right, let's move on to. Hold on. Wait, wait a second. Wait, I, I want to, I, I want to pretend deduct two points from action Jackson because there was a scene earlier on in that movie where, you know, a slightly junkified vanity was like, last chance to Action Jackson. Do you want to? And he was like, nah. Boo! No man turns that down. Boo! Shut up. Boo! Completely unrealistic. No one has a heart of gold like that. Stop it. For 10 All right. points off. Okay. <laughs> Hold the points for that. <laughs> So, all right, the mechanic, anything you're going to take off? No, no, I, I think it was just fine. I don't, I don't have any uh, any bonus points. Although, I, again, I did like Dom Sutherland especially, but uh, we kind of talked about that. But no, it, it is what it is for me. I'm good there. Yeah, same. I thought about taking one off for that, uh, the one in a million chance of him spotting the supposedly dead assassin. And then them having an entire bus all themselves at that busy airport for them to fight in was a bit unrealistic. You know what? I'm going to take a point off for that. <laughs> he talked I talked into it. myself into it. Take a point <laughs> off. It was ridiculous. <laughs> all right. Now, before I wrap this up, do you? Oh, you know, I, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm about to say I'm thank you, thank you, Jason. Jason. I, I, I thank you. Air them out. Uh, apologies for talking over you. First of all, now. Here's my beef. Like, we already talked about the hink in the story where Foster screwed up the first job, which was taking out the big, big guy. And, like, the story should have stopped there. Straight up, Jason Statham would have been like, nah, dude, you're done. Get out of my house. You are absolutely done. But that's not my gripe. My gripe is the fight between Foster and the big guy. Mm -mm. I am not going to say that there aren't fights that exist where a smaller guy couldn't take out a guy with that size differential. I'm not saying that it's not possible. I am saying that, mm -mm, no, that as soon as, like, even when I saw him, like, come with the belt and sort of try to garrot the guy, all the guy had to do was, like, flip the guy over his head. As soon as, and, and, he, and he never would have let up. As soon as the smaller man hit the ground, the bigger guy would have got on top of him and pounded him into paste. <laughs> and that would have been one dead assassin. That part of it, I'm sitting there looking at it like, mm, that was a little bit suspect to me. You know, even though I'm the guest, and if you guys don't, didn't feel motivated enough to take off a point, but I just wanted to bring up that nit. No, I thought about that too. You do have to suspend some pretty good disbelief. I think the choreography of that fight, though, was just so well done that I overlooked it. But it did cross into my mind, too. Like, mm, this guy is like, it's like Little Mac fighting Tyson and punch out. <laughs> you know, it just ain't going to happen. That is the end of our official rounds. Now, don't worry, folks. If you haven't been keeping up with the math at home, we do that for you. Match game was a little low, but not super low. We had four matches on this one. And as far as the sniper points went, Delvin gave three of his five bullets to the mechanic and two to Action Jackson. I feel some kind of way about that, but I'm going to let it slide. I'm surprised uh, too, Jared. I actually <laughs> am. I was like, the mechanic? <laughs> Somehow it ended up with four bullets. That's okay. They're both good films. I just, I am a homer for Action Jackson, as I've just recently learned. Anyways. Taking a look at the judges' scorecards. The winner of this episode of Action Film Face Off with a score of 78 to 70 is Action Jackson. Congratulations to Action Jackson. Now let's head over to the randomizer and find out what the years are going to be for the next episode. My brother Jared will be pulling a film from... 
Choose your destiny. Nineteen seventy nine, and I will bring a film from Choose Your Destiny. Nineteen eighty two. Oh, I got an 80s film. I love 80s films. So excited. What will those films be? Well, we'll tease them on social media for those of you who want to watch before listening. And we're thinking of you, Dave. Or you can tune in next episode to find out Cold Turkey. Well, let's pump the brakes on that because let's talk about next episode. What? Jason and I will get to 1979 versus 1982, but it won't be next episode. It'll be the one following it because Jason... We here have just finished our 64th episode, which means that you and I have watched 128 movies and come up with 64 winners. The next episode, we're going to call our big bracket episode. We're going to have a single elimination tournament, 64 teams going all the way down to the final four and then the last two to decide the champion. All this has been voted on over the last year. I've been putting it out on Twitter X and our Crusaders Club members also get to vote on which movies they thought were best. And those votes are going to determine our champion. So 128 movies later, we had 64 champions. 64 champions are going into a ring and only one movie is going to walk out the ultimate champion of the first 64 episodes of Action Film Face Off. 64 films enter, one film leaves. 64 films enter, one Man. film leaves. 64 films enter, one film leaves. <laughs> the beauty Man. part about this is Jason doesn't know how the voting went. I've been keeping track of it, so it'll be more like I'll be introducing bouts to Jason. Jason will be like, oh, I think this one probably won. There'll probably be some surprises in there, and there will be ones that are no big surprise at all. But we'll talk through the brackets until we get down to the champion on our next special episode. I'm excited. I want to see what won. Oh, my goodness. Thinking back on it, of all the champions we've had, there's some real winners in there. We've got some good ones, man. We got Star Wars in there. We got Raiders in there. Terminator Terminator 2. Mm. Oh, my goodness. There's, uh, decisions are going to have to be made. Man. Decisions need to be made. And there are some that I, you know, I, I'm more privy to the brackets than Jason is because I've been keeping track of all the voting and all that. And there are some that got deeper into the tournament than I would have. It's like a real basketball tournament. There's teams that are like, I can't believe it got that far in. And some that I'm like, yeah, how did that get eliminated so early? You know, like, what? What was that Rob Schneider one that went up against uh, Star Wars? I wonder how far he went. <laughs> You remember oh, what's that? Uh, the sorcerer, the sorcerer. Yeah, yeah. We had nothing to do with magic, as it turns out. As it turned out, no. I could have sworn when I picked it. Bizarrely good movie, but it was anyway. a good movie. It was good, but it was it was definitely different. One of the very like yes, peek behind the curtain. By the way, whatever the randomizer, we do use a real randomizer. It lands on nineteen seventy seven. The pickings are so slim because movies just did not want to go up against Star Wars. It's pretty much like Star Wars, The Sorcerer, and The Spy Who Loved Me. <laughs> that is yep. it. That is like it. Only James Bond had the cojones to take on Star Wars. <laughs> yep, that's true. That is very true. Oh, but yeah, next time around, after the big bracket episode we will reattack 1979 versus 1982 so that is coming but we're gonna take a quick pause for this sort of you know most people don't think of the 64th episode as a monument <laughs> moment <laughs> but from a bracket <laughs> point of view it just worked out perfectly so yeah, that's a good bracket number that's for sure that is what we are gonna do all right until then, I'm Jason Weasel Skull Albrick, and you can find me on social media at Jason Albrick on Instagram and on Threads. And you can find me, Jared Albrick, the Yard Sale Artist, aka Death Probe, at Yard Sale Artist on X and Twitter and Instagram. And you can check out my artwares at www.theyardsaleartist.com. Delvin. Fellas, thanks for having me. I really enjoyed it. I uh, wish you were here instead, Paul, but um, I was I was more than happy to pinch it and would love to do so anytime. You can find me on Twitter, X, D-E-E underscore R-A-Y, 1977. You can find me on Instagram at Delvin Ray. 
Thank you, Delvin. And be sure to check out all the shows under the Long Box Crusade umbrella by subscribing to Long Box Crusade on all your finer podcatchers or on YouTube, or you can go directly to www.longboxcrusade.com. If you'd like to send us a question or a comment, you can do that by hitting us up on social media at Long Box Crusade. We're talking X, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. If you like the X, you can hit us up even more directly. We have at AFFO podcast there. And that kind of comes directly to me, although we'll see the Long Box Crusade stuff, but uh, just one more way to get with us. Oh, and if you want one more way, give us a phone call. We have a voicemail line for the Long Box Crusade shows. It is 707-532-5269. That is 707-532-LBOX. Pick up the phone. Whoa, there you go. You can leave a voicemail about how you feel about matchups and anything you want. As long as it's, uh, you know, suitable for listening ears, we'll play it on the show. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you listening. And until next time, keep your head down. And, and your, your knuckles, knuckles up. up. <laughs> <We're now! laughs> the intro and outro theme to this show and all of our action film face-off shows are done by musical genius joe november check out his soundcloud at j-o-s-e-f-l-i-n-9-9 you will not regret it funny story about our friend ezra gallo he texted me after the last episode dropped where we covered the detonator with Leslie Snipes. And what did it take on Jason? It lost to wanted dead or alive. And yeah, with Rutger Howard. That yeah. Time. And Ezra texted me and he's like, Hey, uh, you guys inspired me. I'm watching wanted dead or alive. And I was like, cool. I said, I really liked it. And then the next day I get a text saying, I made it about 25 minutes into detonator and quit and deleted it from my plex. <laughs> I was like, this is going on your personal record Gallo. <laughs> okay. You don't quit on Wesley Snipes. I don't care. <laughs> Anyways, fight. Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> it's a street fight. Oh. Oh. No effects needed, boys. <laughs> Got it right here. Delvin, I say most people are more familiar with him from the Poltergeist films. That's just off the top of my head. Okay. I forgot of course. that was him in the Poltergeist film, <laughs> actually. But you're right. And you know you know me. Eight, eight movies watched. Eight oh, movies, none of which are a horror film. I get it. Nope. I, get it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like this is the time where we had, like, True Lies versus Return of the Jedi, and Jason just would not let Return of the Jedi lose. He just, like, kept doing the math in his head to make sure. To <laughs> and, and at the time, I don't even think a sniper was around. He's like, uh, sniper, sniper point goes to Return of the Jedi. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's not even a thing. No I, didn't do math. I didn't do math. I just gave everything a 10. What? Don't. I love that part. <laughs> You're supposed to let me finish it off. She's gonna blow him away.